a family gets stranded in a strange town where every resident is trapped by the creatures that come at night. Sheriff Boyd rings the bell near sunset, alerting the townspeople that it's time to go home. Upon hearing this, Sarah closes the diner where she works and touches the talisman on the side of the door. When the sheriff passes by the clinic, the town's doctor, Christy, interrupts Mr. Liu's chess game with his son, Deputy Kenny. She reminds him that he needs to be in the basement, promising he can return upstairs in the morning. Upon leaving the clinic, Kenny compliments how the doctor handles his ailing father. Christy then suggests letting his mother join her husband for the night, but the man notes that his mother is in denial about his father's condition. After he leaves, Christy locks the establishment and turns the talisman by the door. After ensuring that everyone is indoors, Boyd goes to the post office, where he glances at the sign declaring that it's been 96 nights without any incident. He then locks the door where another talisman hangs nearby. As night falls, Frank is passed out at the local bar, so his wife, Lauren, locks up their home without him. While her mother covers the windows, their daughter, Megan, hears her grandmother tapping on the window, asking her to go to her. The girl insists that she's not allowed to, but the woman promises not to tell. With this, Megan opens the blinds and finds her grandmother outside. Lauren walks in, warning her daughter that it isn't her grandmother. However, the girl opens the window to let the elderly woman in, who turns into a monster. The following morning, somewhere outside of the town, Jim Matthews drives their RV with his wife, Tabitha, and children, Julie and Ethan. Julie pretends that her brother's toy is killed by monsters, upsetting the kid. Tabitha assures her son that monsters aren't real, so his toy is okay. Meanwhile, Frank finally walks back home and finds a crowd gathered around. Boyd immediately punches the man, beating him for not nailing his window shut. Seeing the open window, Frank starts weeping, realizing what happened. The sheriff then drags the grieving man into his daughter's room, showing what's left of his family. Frank collapses in tears, but Boyd doesn't give him mercy since he got drunk instead of protecting his family. The sheriff then commands Kenny to lock up the broken man. As Boyd leaves, Father Catry arrives. The sheriff then notices the family's talisman on the floor and pockets it before leaving. On the road, Jim reminisces about better days, but this upsets his wife. Just then, he finds a collapsed tree blocking the road. While the family checks it, crows start gathering around them, so they decide to turn back. Meanwhile, Boyd heads to the manor called the Colony House and approaches its leader, Donna. She reminds him that he's not supposed to be there, but the man insists on seeing his son. Inside, Boyd's son, Ellis, sketches his girlfriend, Fatima, when the father interrupts them. Boyd informs his son that Lauren and Megan died last night, so he invites him to attend their funeral. Ellis refuses without looking his father in the eye, so the sheriff decides to leave. On the road, Julie's phone loses signal, making Tabitha worry that they're lost. Eventually, they reach the dilapidated house and chance upon the graveyard where Lauren and Megan's funeral is held. Seeing them, Boyd reminds everyone to let him and Kenny handle the newcomers. With that, everyone starts leaving and ignores Jim as he tries to ask for directions. The sheriff approaches him instead, telling him to just follow the road to get to the highway. The family follows his instructions, but eventually realizes that they're driving in circles. Sarah's brother, Nathan, notices the RV pass by them again, while his sister notes that expecting to find a way back home is the worst part of the experience. After Nathan leaves, Sarah pauses by the door, looking scared. After returning to the town several times, Jim turns the vehicle around, hoping that taking the opposite direction will lead them away. Seeing this, the sheriff decides they're ready and tells Kenny to get the strips. The Matthews then see an incoming car, so Tabitha wonders if they can ask for directions. However, the vehicle drives recklessly, forcing Jim to swerve out of the road, turning their RV on its side in the woods. When he wakes up, Jim finds himself stuck with a branch around him while his wife is unconscious and Ethan has a table leg through his thigh. Meanwhile, the other car's driver, Toby, exits his vehicle, which crashed against a tree. He soon reaches Boyd and Kenny, who are setting up spike strips on the road. Learning about the accident, the sheriff orders Kenny to take the man to the clinic and call reinforcements while he searches for the RV. When he gets to the site, the sheriff finds Toby's companion, Jade, exiting the car. With the man under the influence, he cuffs him to the car before checking the RV. Boyd assures the family that help is on the way before climbing inside and confirming that Tabitha is alive. In town, Katri invites Ellis to join the rescue operation to ensure that his father makes it back on time. Despite his strained relationship with the sheriff, Ellis joins them. They soon arrive at the crash site just as Boyd gets Julie out. As Tabitha wakes up, she gets carried out of the vehicle and joins her daughter. Meanwhile, Christy confirms that Ethan is okay for now, but getting him out will take too long. With the sun setting in minutes, Boyd suggests treating him inside the vehicle and using the talisman from Lauren's home to secure the RV. 
Despite not having used one on a vehicle before, they have no choice but to take the risk. With that, Christy returns inside and tells Jim to join his wife while she treats their son. As soon as the father joins his family, Boyd warns them that it's not safe to stay outside at night, so they must go back into town. When Jim refuses to leave his son, the sheriff insists on not digging more graves, so he advises him to at least let his wife and daughter go. Scared, Jim relents. In the clinic, Toby wakes to Sarah watching him. He asks if the others are okay, but the woman says no. This makes him panic, guilty over causing the accident. Sarah kisses him and tells him that it isn't his fault before killing him. Meanwhile, Tabitha refuses to leave Ethan but accidentally calls him Thomas. When her husband points this out, the woman cries. He then reminds her that the doctor has to focus on their son, so Tabitha can't stay, given her condition. Just then, Kenny hurries them to leave, so Jim urges his wife and daughter to go with him. Afterward, the father helps Christy set up the RV for the operation. Outside, Boyd prays over the talisman before joining them. He sets the talisman over the driver's door, but Jim questions this. The sheriff just explains that he's keeping the RV safe. Elsewhere, the truck carrying the others accidentally crosses the spike strip. With the sun setting, the group is forced to rush on foot to Colony House since it's closer. In the RV, Ethan starts ceasing while wails echo from outside. When the sheriff checks, he finds strange, pale people walking toward them. Ethan finally stops seizing, and Christy assures the father that he's stable. Just then, someone knocks on the vehicle, making Jim think that the others are back. However, his companions warn that whoever is out there aren't people. Meanwhile, the other group struggles to reach the colony house as the rain pours. Jade collapses, forcing Katri and Ellis to carry him. The residents inside hear them, but mistake them for the strange creatures. However, Fatima recognizes that Ellis is among them, so she argues to let them in. As the others bang on the door, pale people approach them. One of them talks to Julie, wearing the face of someone she knows. Before she can go to them, Kenny pulls her back and shoots the man, who merely smiles despite getting hit. Finally, Donna arrives and orders her people to let them in, saving them just in time. When they enter, however, she commands Tabitha and Julie to be tied up. With no choice, Alice blinds the women as they demand an explanation. In the woods, things grow quiet, so Jim uses this chance to ask what's happening. Boyd admits that they don't know what the creatures are or how the talismans work, but they only know that it keeps the things from entering. Christy then wonders if Ethan had seizures before, and when the father says no, the locals exchange knowing looks. The kid finally wakes up, but Christy sedates him to keep him calm. At the colony house, Alice comes Jade to a bed while explaining to a resident named Trudy that two cars arrived today, which hasn't happened in a long time. The woman becomes interested in the new guy, so she decides to watch over him. Downstairs, Donna speaks to Tabitha alone to explain what's happening. She notes that since they're strangers and everyone reacts differently on their first night there, they must take precautions. However, she assures the mother that they won't hurt them since everyone in this town has gone through what they're experiencing now. In the kitchen, another resident named Victor finds Julie tied to a chair. As he grabs food behind her, the woman gets scared. He then shares that two cars arriving hasn't happened in a very long time, so he asks her what she thinks it means. Luckily, Fatima stops him from scaring the woman further. After Victor leaves, Fatima assures the newcomer that he's harmless, but weird, since he's been there for a long time. She then explains that they had to bind her since some people panic on their first night. Pitying the woman, Fatima takes her to Ellis's room to show her his drawings. She hints that her boyfriend would probably want to draw Julie too, since she's pretty. She then explains that the windows must be covered at night, so it'll be difficult for the creatures outside to get in their head, much like how one of them talked to Julie earlier. They do this to convince their victims to let them in. Later, Christy prepares to treat Ethan when a voice echoes from outside, telling them that they should have let them in. The creatures then start climbing over the RV, so Jim asks what'll happen if they get in. The sheriff just assures him that as long as the talisman is there, the creatures can't enter unless they let them. However, Christy panics about the talisman falling, so Boyd assures her that it won't. Seeing that the two are scared, the sheriff reminds them to just focus on Ethan. With that, the trio works together to remove the table leg from Ethan, which they successfully do. At the colony house, Kenny complains to Katri about the resident's treatment of the newcomers. Overhearing this, Alice sympathizes that Donna can be rough, but they should be thankful that they let them in. Kenny points out that they didn't do so immediately, so Alice argues that they wouldn't have had to if he didn't leave the spike strip on the road. Before things escalate, Katri gets between them, so Alice leaves them a liquor bottle to calm their nerves before heading to bed. Amidst all this, the local nurse, Gina, keeps Mr. Liu company in the clinic's basement, unaware that Sarah has killed Toby upstairs. The woman starts talking to someone unseen, who convinces her to do something. 
Because of this, she grabs the blade and hesitantly starts working on Toby's body. Meanwhile, the priest and the deputy enjoy drinks to calm down. When Kenny worries for the others, Katri promises that they'll pick them up in the morning. However, the deputy refuses to be first at the scene again after discovering Lauren and Megan. Elsewhere, Donna finishes explaining the situation to Tabitha, who thinks she's mad. Despite what she saw outside, the mother refuses to believe this, leading Donna to compare her to her sister. The colony leader recounts how she and her sister were hunting when they saw the tree on the road. This surprises Tabitha, since she hasn't mentioned the tree yet. Donna also confirms that everyone in town saw the same tree and the crows, which led them all to this town. She continues that her sister insisted on finding the way back home, since she didn't want the deer they caught to spoil. Because of that, they continued driving and ended up in the town at night. They just kept driving until they found one person standing in front of their car, smiling. Donna's impatient sister grabbed her shotgun and approached the man, who ripped her apart. The frightened Donna then saw more people arriving, so she ran and hid under some bushes in the forest. However, she soon realized that her sister was still alive since the creatures were tormenting her as if playing with their prey. Despite this, Donna was frozen in fear, unable to help her sister. In the woods, Christy uses saline from a jar as an IV for Ethan, revealing that they only have the few medical supplies from the ambulance she arrived in town with. She was only a medical student then, but had to step up for the town. This prompts her to ask Jim what he did, so he shares that he's an engineer who builds theme park attractions. Christy then smiles, noting how he's still using the present tense to describe his job. Ethan then wakes up and shares that he dreamed about a wall of drawings where he saw the Lake of Tears. Unbeknownst to them, this wall is in Victor's bedroom, which is lined with drawings about the town and the strange creatures. The man is also drawing the crash site, despite not having been there. In the colony house, a drunk Kenny recounts their troubles with his father's dementia. His condition was why Mr. Liu took a bus to the city alone in the middle of the night, forcing him and his mother to pick him up. However, when they were driving back home, they saw the collapsed tree that changed their lives. Meanwhile, Sarah returns home and cleans the blood from herself. Nathan finds her and the woman cries in his arms, asking for help and insisting that she didn't have a choice. During this, Gina tucks Mr. Liu to bed before checking on Toby. When she heads upstairs, however, she finds the man's bloody corpse and the front door open, letting the grinning creatures enter. Afraid, the woman rushes back into the basement. In the RV, Jim checks on the talisman, wondering how it works. However, he removes it from the door, allowing a creature to break in. Christy wakes from this nightmare in the morning, glad to find that they actually survived the night. They soon head outside, just as the others return to pick them up, reuniting the Matthews family after the previous night's horrors. Meanwhile, Nathan watches over his sister, who tells a story about a girl in a room filled with broken glass. She knew that the glass meant something, so she tried to put them back together, only to get herself wounded. Sarah compares this to the voices in her head, who told her to make what she did look like it was the creatures. She didn't want to do it, but they told her it was the only way for her to go home. When Nathan begs her to tell him what she did, Sarah finally reveals that she left the clinic door open. Soon, the others arrive at the clinic and get alarmed upon seeing it open with the talisman on the floor. Kenny rushes downstairs and finds Gina's body. Katri tells the man that he doesn't have to go in, but the deputy pushes on and discovers Mr. Liu's torn corpse. Kenny can only grieve as he holds his father in his arms. Later, Kenny takes his grief out by chopping down a tree. The worried sheriff approaches him, so the deputy explains that he needs wood to make a new chess set. He and his father made the old one, but they're ruined by the blood. He then reveals that he always let his father win by avoiding his pieces at the last end of the game. He compares this to the creatures, who only walk and never run since they know they have the people cornered. However, Kenny thinks they will run out of places to hide soon. After this, the sheriff finally returns to the post office and erases the number on the Nights Without Incident sign as the peace they've enjoyed is now broken. As the Matthews family settles in Colony House, Ethan notices a strange boy in white outside the window. The boy shushes him, thus beginning the family's entanglement with the creatures that keep everyone trapped in this nightmarish town. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.